So, honestly, um, uh, it came to us by more or less a coincidence already in 2008 that I started with wines that we did in Sulfur. At this time, it was not common that natural wines were fancy or it was not, not happening already that this um, uh, natural wine thing was um, uh, doing this rock and roll thing like today in Copenhagen or Paris and okay. so. But we learned already quite early and we started with amphoras, we used prototypes with floor yeast and we did a lot of experimental things to find out how to stabilize wine. Do you do wine. any uh, fermentation in amphora gas? Um, uh, so we did it in the past, today we are not doing too much whole cluster fermentation anymore. Okay. We are focusing on a cold, mat cold maceration thing that is for us better to control and it's more elegant than a Riesling fermenting on full skins. Okay. So if it comes to the point of natural wines, I can tell you that we need to talk about terror again. Okay. A lot of people saying or think that um, uh, natural wine has nothing to do with terror because we don't taste it in the same way like we did it in the classical wine world with sulfur. Mm. But if it comes to the point of stabilization, um, uh, you directly recognize how good the terra was. So in front of every barrel in our cellar we have a white clear bottle okay. with the juice or the wine and so we in front. in front of every barrel. Okay, so, so we unlike see. the standard one you could actually see the juice. Exactly, we can more or less look into the wine and we see the future of what's going to happen with the wine. Okay. We see if oxidation is coming or not. And if you walk through our cellar, it would be a pleasure if you do that one, one day, um, uh, you see directly Grand Cru Premier Cru Village. Oh. Just by color. So, as better as the vineyard is, as more stable the wines are already. Magical. So it's like instantaneous yeah? uh, yes. sort of read read yes. So, in most of the reasons, it really is visible already. Okay. The only thing is that we have hardly any education in the markets about how this is tasting. So, oh. we just started to learn about all these processes. And what we know today already, that we can produce wines now without any added sulfur that are not going to oxidize for years. So we have wines laying in oak barrels for five years now without any gram of sulfur and it's not slightly getting brown. It's totally stable. I see. And that's extremely magical to see that it's possible. Do you have the pre-bottling type of wine like the uh, Franconian have in Featherweizen? that will give you a different insight into the wine at that stage? Yeah, so we, we are not bottling this um, uh, prototypes. I, I yeah. know, but, but uh, would people have an opportunity to taste it? No, no, no. no. Only you? Oh, only me and my team and some professionals, of course, in the cellar. We can now talk about vintage 19 and give a, um, a barrel, some barrel samples. Okay, but that's for but you to see the yes, development at yes. that stage. I'm, I'm tasting this wine when I'm at home uh, um, uh, during fermentation once a day and at the moment um, a minimum once a week okay. um, uh, to, to stay close to my wines. Because okay. I told you that we do more than six selections partly from one vineyard. So we have a kind of piano to play on okay. to do the replendings. Right. And this kind of piano playing is only possible if you know your barrels very good. And, and what sort of barrels do you use? So it's um, 600 liters and um, 1200 liters old oak. Okay. So we have a rotating, rotating cellar. That means every year there's one barrel coming in and one is going out. So the average of the barrels is around 50 years. So these are what kind of oak? It's German um, uh, oak. Okay. So, so it's um, from a German oak uh, um, uh, yeah, barrel it's, maker? It's, it's a German barrel maker. We just got our first, first Austrian barrel this year. Um, and uh, where, where would the German barrel makers be from, the one that you use? So they take the, the oak from the small um, uh, forest in the Hunsrück. Yeah? Okay. And and they so do it specially for you? So every barrel is customized for us. Yeah. Okay. A barrel is a very special thing. You can talk about barrels for hours okay. because barrel making is as complex as wine making. So because that determines uh, what's yes. how, how the, the wine evolves. The, the effect of barrels is super strong, not by the primary oak effect. We don't believe in primary oak effects to our Riesling, so okay. we don't want to produce barrique wines. Yeah. But every barrel is getting after a couple of time and a couple of years, it's getting an individual education system for the wine. And you, you use that barrel for a, a certain wine in that matrix? Yes. 
So we have barrels that are um, uh, meant to be cabinet barrels. We have barrels that we only use for Pettental wines, for example. And so we you use that year in year after, yes, 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 after yes, yes. washing yeah. and cleaning yeah. So and what is the life of uh, each of those barrels? Uh, so 15 years? No, they, these barrels can be used for 100 years. Okay. Um, uh, and I told you the average age is 50. Yeah. Five zero. Five zero. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, but um, as this only works is that the barrels are in perfect conditions. Okay. And the best way to conserve a barrel is to have wine in it. Yeah? Okay. Every cleaning process is stress to a barrel, but wine is stabilizing. Okay. Should I try it? Hello. Of course. What's that you're holding, okay, Phyllis? This is a natural wine. Oh, okay. Okay. That'll be wonderful. Super. So we talked.